Hi everyone, this is lecture on unsteady flow through orifices, tubes, and overwheels. So let's have unsteady flow. The flow through an outlet or opening is unsteady if the flow rate is not constant. So let's have this situation here. We have and a reservoir, we have an outlet, we have an inflow, and the rate at which we have a source is Q in, and this is Q out, the outlet. This outlet may be an orifice or a short tube. So when Q in is greater than Q out, then we expect that the head will rise. So we have rising head case. When Q in equals Q out, we have constant head, and we are true with this. Then we concentrate on the third case when Q in is less than Q out because this, in most cases, all almost all problems belong to this situation. We have falling head. So the initial head would be HI. The final head would be HF. And in general, the head will be variable at H. So the outlet may be an orifice, wear, or a short tube. So this is the head at any time. Then the surface area at that situation is also in general variable. And this is the change in area when for a very small change in depth when For a very short time dt so this is the surface area of the liquid at any time so a very for a very small time dt the difference between q in and q out is constant so for instance q in is three liters per second and q out is four liters per second of course in a blink of an eye there will be no change in the rate of inflow and Q out because it is just a blink of an eye. The time elapses is a very small fraction of a second. So therefore, this difference, which is constant times differential time, would be equal to this volumetric loss. So differential volume is equal to quantity Q in minus Q out times dt. And this differential volume is represented by this uh, volume here, difference of volume, which is area S times dH. So quantity Q in minus Q out times dT. From here, dT is area S dH over quantity Q in minus Q out. From here, we can now derive a formula for the time for the surface to drop from HI to H sub F. So time, therefore, is the integral of area S dH over quantity Q in minus Q out with limits from initial head, which is higher, to final head, which is lower because we have rising head. So that's the general formula for computing the time for the surface to drop from HI to HF. Now, let's consider a situation where Q in is zero because in most cases, we have falling head. When Q in is zero, the general formula becomes integ time equals integral from HI to HF of area S dH over zero minus Q out. And since this is negative, interchanging limits, it will become positive. So time equals integral from HF to HI of area S dH over Q out. Then the, that's the general formula when Q in is zero. Then when the outlet is an orifice, the discharge formula for an orifice for this general situation is, remember, kaotog. But the head is small h here because that's the representation of the head at any time. So replacing Q out by that expression, then we have area S dH from HF to HI integral of kaotog. Then this formula suggests that Area S must be a function of head. So how to relate area S with the head? Of course, by geometric means. 
Now, it should be a function of h so that this integral is uh, can be evaluated. Then, when area S is constant for prismatic tanks or the area S is constant, it may have circular section or any section as long as the sides are vertical. So, area S is constant. Then, we can put area S before the integral sign as well as C area O and square root of 2G. So, we have area S over C area O square root of 2G, which I read Kautog for your convenience to memorize the formula. So, we have integral of dh over square root of h, or this is h to the negative 1 half dh. Then, it is equal to area S over Kautog, then h to the positive 1 half over 1 half from hf to hi. Therefore, the formula reduces to, when area S is constant, to ash time equals to ash kautog. So that's the time for the surface to drop from hi to hf. To ash to area S, then with limit square root of hi minus square root of hf over kautog. There's no h in the denominator anymore because we have already uh, derived the, that formula. Then let's consider a situation where we have two tanks that are connected with a short tube or an orifice. So let's consider the two tanks shown separated by means of a short tube or an orifice. Now in this situation, uh, area, surface area of both tanks are constant, but uh, if you want to be challenged, then the area S may be variable for challenging situations. So, let us say when the outlet or the two tanks are connected with this short tube or orifice and it is opened, then naturally the one with the higher head will fall and the one with lower head will rise because the flow would be from high pressure to low pressure. So this portion of the liquid here will transfer to the other side, will enter to the other side. And the principle is the volume lost in one tank is equal to volume gained on the other tank. Or the volume that leaves one tank equals volume entering the other tank. So we will denote the surface area of the left reservoir as A. It may have greater area or it may have small area as long as we denote it with A, and the surface area of the other tank is M. Now, you may denote the surface area of the other tank as B, but I have an intention to make it M so that the derived formula will be easy to remember later. Then the initial head is HI, the difference between the original level in the left and original level in the right tank. And the final head would be the difference in elevation of the final surface, so that's HF, the net head. So this is why one, both reservoirs, both surfaces are exposed to the atmosphere, so that the pressure would be atmospheric for both uh, surfaces. So this is the drop in the liquid level in the left tank, and the rise in the liquid level in the right tank is denoted by Y2. So by principle, by the way, uh, we have a change in volume for a very small period of time in general. So we have here the H1 and the increase in depth for a very short period of time on the other side would be the H2. And the total change would be dH. So this is the head at any time and the total change would be dH which is dH1 plus dH2. So by principle, the volume that leaves one tank equals volume entering the other tank. So that is volume leaving one tank is AY1 and the volume that enters the other tank or gained by the other tank is M times Y2. 
similarly for this very small volumetric change so we have a dh1 equals m dh2 so that means dh2 is a dh1 over m and dh is dh1 plus dh2 replacing dh2 by a dh1 over m so a dh1 over m then factor out the h1 so the h equals the h1 times quantity 1 plus a over m or the h equals the the h1 times m plus a over m so the h1 therefore is m dh over quantity m plus a then let's substitute that into the time for the surface considering only the left tank to drop so the time for the liquid surface surfaces to drop from HI to HF is given by, imagine the left tank only. It was integral of area S dH over area S dH1 because we considered left tank over Kautog, right? Because the outlet is an orifice or a short tube. So the outlet is the discharge formula for the outlet is Kautog. Now, where area S is equal to A, because we are considering the left tank alone, imagine there's no right tank there. So we replace area S by A and DH1 by this value here. Then we have time equals integral from HF to HI of A, DH1, which is MDH over M plus A over Kautog. So, so putting the constants before the integral sign. So we have MA over M plus A, then times quantity Kautog. We separate square root of H in the denominator. And again, this is integral of H to the negative one half dH. And that is H to the one half or two square root of H in general. So MA over quantity M plus A Kautog without h, 2 square root of h from hf to hi. Therefore, the time for the surfaces in the two tanks to drop from big hi to big hf is tuma quantity square root of hi minus square root of hf over makauto. Remember, I intentionally replace the area of the right reservoir by m because I want you to memorize this in this manner. Tuma, tuma ba? You may, for the oldies, Viagra daw, so that you can magautog. Tuma or magautog. So something that is, that will arouse the, the person who will drink something. So, I hope you can easily recall this. Toma, quantity square root of HI minus square root of HF over quantity M plus A, ma, ka, o, tog, without H in the denominator because we already evaluated that variable into that equation. So, if either M or A is very large, like lake or ocean surface or fish pond surface, then the ratio m over m plus a or a over m plus a so i i assume that m is larger than a so for example m is 1 million square meters and a is only 2 square meters or less than so it would be 1 million over 1 million 2 that would be equal to 1 so the formula reduces for this situation here when one surface area is very large to to a over kautog when m in this expression m is very large compared to a and if a is larger than a then you just replace a by m also so that's it for this lecture i hope that you can recall and you can easily recall the formulas for 
for certain situations you can also derive if you want to